This is Fantology. You may have heard of us. Hello, rioters, and welcome to another episode of Fantology. Today, you have me, Ryan, as your host, joined by Ben. And uh, Josh has changed his name on Zoom to Violence, so he's already <laughs> going there. And we're joined by a very special guest, first time in on Phantology, hopefully not the only time, but uh, Riley, who is my and Ben's sister-in-law, and she's the first person who read this book, um, and probably the reason, the primary reason why I started reading this book, um, and the book is Fourth Wing. So welcome, Ben and Josh and Riley. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, did you, so did you see... um... Riley, had you rented Fourth Wing on our Libby account? Because I know that you're that you're on there sometimes. Or was that just a I happy think coincidence? I had, I had illegally retrieved it from a website called Anna's Archive. Oh, okay. Well, that. let's let's yeah. not uh, admit to any illegal activities on the podcast, please. I had borrowed it from the internet, but you fair, loved it fair. so much that you bought it, right? No, I didn't buy it. But yes, I bought it. Yes, I bought it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Well, it's actually, that's, that's one thing. I, I don't know if it's still the case, but I know for a while it was very hard to procure copies of this book because people just love it so much. So, so I, um, I had a friend that read it and her and I, she's like recommended a ton of books to me. Um, And so she recommended it to me like probably a month and a half before I agreed to read it. Cause I wasn't super in the mood for a fantasy book. So I was kind of like putting it off a little bit. And I talked to her about a couple of books that she'd reviewed recently and really liked. And she was like, you have to start with the fourth wing. Like that is probably the best out of all of these. And then you can read all these other books. And so she eventually convinced me to read it and I did really enjoy it. And then Ryan snuck found, like stumbled upon my review on Goodreads and forced everyone else to read it. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw it on a website. Uh, like I, I was looking for bookstores and I went to this, uh, this online this or this bookstore's online page and they had fourth wing and it was like dragon riders boom i love dragon riders it was like a, a dragon rider college i was like oh coming of age boom i love those two things this book is totally for me and then i looked it up on goodreads and i was reading this review and then i was like wait this is friends and family reviews and i was like oh this riley what i know her and so it was just it was kind of a weird surreal experience for me um but then of course I I joined in, read it, and I was like, "Hey Ben, you should jump in do this review with Riley." And then Josh was like, "Hey, I'm reading it too." So we, yeah, we this this book is kind of like a I feel like a cultural phenomena right now, or at least like on book talk um, among like the fantasy romance genre, which I I romance as it likes to be called. Oh wait, wait what well, is this term? Romance. <laughs> Romancy. <laughs> Romancy. Wow. We're all being Welcome educated here. <laughs> so wait, Riley, is this the first Romancy book you've read? Like you haven't read A Court of Thrones and Roses and stuff? I have read A Court of, a Court of Thrones. Okay. Because mm -hmm. I feel like that's kind of what jump started this genre of books, yeah. right? I would probably agree. Yeah. Is that right? Kind of like the, yeah. Because I mean, you could say like Twilight's a fantasy romance yeah. book too, but like I, there's definitely a different flavor. Mm -hmm. to from twilight to these books yeah Let, let's uh let's give our listeners a baseline i mean chances are you probably listened to us before you know that ben josh and i love epic fantasy and generally don't stray too far outside of that genre but i think riley is a bit more like her interests are more broad than ours so tell us some of the books that you or or genres that you love to read riley um yeah, I feel like I'm I'm sort of new in the whole romanticy thing. It started with The Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, I actually didn't super like that first book, and but I liked the rest of them in the series. Um, okay. So there's those books. I also really enjoy psychological thrillers. For a oh. book to be interesting for me, it needs it needs to have that like page turner feel where I'm reading it and I like just can't get enough of it, and I like. I get to a point where I'm like, okay, I need to go like drive, so I need to go find the audiobook because I can't stop like the story what are some psychological thrillers you like i recently just finished the wife by um the last name's burke the first name's it's hard for me to pronounce i think it's like alifair um that is a super good book that is it's sort of similar to the fourth wing where it 
throws you into like right into the middle of like sort of a conflict or chaos or something like that and so from the beginning you have sort of had that page turner feel of like i can't wait to get to the next part so do you like the books like the woman across the train tracks from the window or whatever like those type <laughs> of books yeah i haven't read that book it's on my list but yeah those kinds of is books. That, i feel like that was a combination of five books right there <laughs> oh, i think that's actually that is the title of like one book oh is it really? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Was, i think there is there is a girl on the train and there's a girl on the train okay, and then like the woman in the, in the window or something yeah. yeah okay have you seen that net this is we'll get back on topic but have you seen oh, that yeah. netflix show starring uh kristen bell was it yeah 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 yeah, yeah that, that one was great. funny yeah okay like what that. was it called oh that one it, it's a, it's a similar play on the name like a woman oh. across the street from the okay. man and the i don't know something funny yeah um i i will say that this definitely did have a page turner aspect to it it was relentlessly paced i think like uh and and sometimes in my opinion a little bit to its detriment like it didn't really let you sit in in you know Absorbed. like the world too much because the plot just needed to happen well but, let's, well, let's um, jump into the spoiler free wait, 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 thoughts. i think before we do spoilers can we just like all give like a quick no, no, that's what i'm saying oh, spoiler okay. free thoughts it oh, sounded like josh thoughts. was okay. getting into that so i yeah. wanted to hear let's let's hear his spoiler free overview all right spoiler free overview well, okay. Before that, before I get to that, I wanted to continue the meta conversation a tiny bit, Ryan. Sorry, it's okay. derailing. But right. derail um, We're talking this, about girls on trains. Yeah, this was the first book in a new imprint. Did you did you research this at all, Riley? Uh. Uh-uh. It's like oh what. Um, well, to be honest, I don't know what imprint means. So an, an imprint is like a publisher, and then like the publisher will have like different like uh, imprints that they use to like distribute different books oh okay um so like this is the first imprint this is the first book in the new new tower dang red tower yeah i thought it was red something yeah red red tower is it i should i should have had this pulled up um each of you uh, remembered half of the name <laughs> josh the girl remembered in the red something tower. tower ben remembered red something <laughs> across the street yeah so it's it's anyway um it doesn't matter. Um, but apparently that's why the people are saying it was so well marketed on like book talk and stuff is because they really wanted to launch this new imprint with like a bang. And so it, it got the, like the arc into a lot of different hands. And that's, I think part of the like virality behind it is they really, really had like a deep marketing budget for it. Not to say it what like it didn't earn that publicity as well, but that's just something to keep in note is that it, it was very heavily marketed, I think. Mm-hmm. So Entangled um, Publishing is launching Red Tower books. Yeah, Entangled wow, Publishing. Red Tower. And Red Tower, it. apparently, yeah, apparently it's like a new, or from what I was looking at, they're trying to really uh, narrow down on this fantasy romance or this romanticy, romanticy as- yeah. aspect. So it might be a, something to keep on your radar. Um, hey. I mean, so, and currently on Goodreads, it's at a 4.67, yeah, which this, is amazing, with two hundred over 240,000 ratings. That's insane. Oh gosh, the number yeah. of ratings is absolutely insane. Yeah. That, it really it really is. This does feel like Twilight when it came yeah. out. You know what I mean? It, it really does. Um, so with this like meta, meta conversation, so we have romanticy, and I was also exposed to a new uh, vocab term for books which is instead of like young adult it's like new adult Mm. where it's like following a slightly older protagonist right she's 20 instead of like typically ya is like 15 or 16 maybe 17 so she's uh 20 tends to be like a little bit more gratuitous in terms of like the violence or sex that can have in it um so and it might not be just but so this is where i get like what's different between that and just like adult fantasy you know what i mean is it just that you're like following a 20 to 23 year old or something like what's the i I think that i think i think it really tends to focus in on like the transition between adolescence and adulthood whereas like most adult fantasy that might be an aspect of one of the characters character development but that's not really like the focus of the book whereas this is really her like leaving home leaving home and like becoming an adult i think and not that again, like that happens in the wheel of time, obviously, and and basically every fantasy book it, it will have aspects of that, but it's not so 
such a focus it's like this okay book? i don't know so it's somebody going off to college instead of off to high school type thing like yeah. twilight you're following bella who's in high school right like that's that's the character whereas like here you're you're following violet who's in basically college right there these aren't like high school students yeah hopefully not <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know. I thought that was interesting. That's that's the first time I've heard this, this term, and I feel like there could be a market for Is that. Especially, we, I feel like this was what I think we talked about this in our uh, Court of Thorn, Thorns and Roses conversation. I, I would print that and put that in the new adult. Yeah, I would. Say yeah, well. oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, yeah. That, that's a good way to put it because it did feel like I was reading a YA book, but you know, with much more mature themes. So yeah. I like it, it was weird for me because, you know, I was like, I, I feel like I could have read this in like middle school, except for, you know, the, yeah, the random. <laughs> there's there's violence. some. Uh, yeah, there's there's chapter some sex 30. scenes and violence. Yeah. Chapter yeah. 30 to 32. <laughs> you could the, the, if we were in Twilight Days, you would just have like parents with Sharpies just like, yeah. you know, Tearing those I, forgot, I forgot about that trend. Oh, my gosh. That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> But right, are you but, guys ready for the broad overviews yet? Yeah, yeah, but I was gonna say it's not just the like smuttiness of it too, right? Like there's people that die regularly. Oh yeah, the book, like violent deaths. So well, don't, they die in Twilight too. Right? Okay, violent yeah, deaths. they do. Maybe it's more off screen, yeah. but it's a little bit more off screen, and I I think it's also like, well, this will we can talk more about this in spoilers because I don't want to. Like, all right well i think even saying that people die in the book people could get upset about so people die in the first chapter of the book <laughs> yeah okay that's fair josh give us all your, right, share, share your spoiler free the... overview spoiler free overview um i think that i'm obviously not like the target audience for this book like i'm not a new adult really as much as that isn't fun to say anymore um i'm a man which uh, I think that this book is I'm definitely man. really geared towards men. Keep telling um, yourself that, Josh. <laughs> uh, so anyway, so I'm I'm rating it as like I just where I'm coming from, not like what I think somebody in the target demographic would rate it. So having said that, probably like a like a four out of ten. <laughs> Sorry, not out, not out, not out five. Ooh, um, jeez. And, and so, Josh, but, what other book have you given a four? Like, have you oh. ever gone that low for a book? Well, okay. Well, here's the here's the thing. I think five for me is what an average book is, and I I try to limit myself to reading above average books. So, like, this is me trying to say that like, this is like maybe a slightly below average book. So, I don't know, but just just for me, like, and that doesn't mean that other uh, I don't think that other people would enjoy it. Like, um, so we can get to reasons why I think that, but again, like. I, if, if people like this book, then that's absolutely great. Like, I don't want to say that you shouldn't like this book because it definitely it has like fun aspects to it. And I finished it and didn't DNF it. So anyway, there's my, there's my rating. Okay. All right. Let's move on to Ben. I'm going to go a little bit higher. I'm going to say six and a half, maybe even, maybe even a seven. Here's the thing. First book for, of like a core of thrones and roses was like, I did not enjoy that one very much. I think I give that book a four as well. Also, it felt like so derivative of like, it just felt very derivative. And I, I feel like this was like substantially better than that. So like, if that book was like a five, then I'm going to say that this book's a seven. Um, having said that, uh, there were things that like were just, I just couldn't get past how like bad some things were in it right and we can maybe talk about these things more but like her editor like there's some things that her like editor could have been like you should probably change this and that would have like elevated it to like an eight for me pretty easily because i thought that this book had a lot of promise with like a lot of just like like so as far as like plot part. point like major plot points could have been restructured or like the actual no, 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 like not, writing like prose not even prose but like I don't, so if this, I don't want it to be a spoiler, but there'll, there'll be, there's like intense action scenes happening. And then she'll just like pontificate about like, like shove world building in your face, like for a page, like in the middle of like the most intense action scene of the book. Like that just like, yeah, was 
completely unnecessary. She's going to school. She can have the professors tell you about the world building and have it not be this like weird thing where she's like facing a like life and death situation. And suddenly like as the reader, I'm having to read about like the borders of these countries. So that like, there's just a few things like that, that just like, I think like, I don't know how anybody could argue that those things couldn't be like made substantially better. And I feel like if those things were just made better, it would, it would have made like the book like a lot, a lot better for me. So that's, that's what I'm saying. So I'll go, I'll stay over on like a seven. All right. Next, we're going to go to Riley and Riley do not let these guys opinions temper your own. No, All no. Right? Yeah. You're good. I I've read enough, like five out of five star reviews that like nothing will shock me. And so if you give it a 10 out of 10, then that's great. I, I, I prepared for this. I like, <laughs> I went on to good reason. I found people who hated the book and I wrote, I read what they wrote about it. And there's, so there's, I'm prepared for the negative reviews. Okay, um, good. I, my overall, like on Goodreads, I, you can only do it out of five. I think I gave it a 4.8. Not a lot of books I've given that. I've never given it very, very high. Very high. I would say. Yeah. Like, so that's like 9.16 right there. Yeah. Wait, it's hot. Check your math. No, no, it's not. Come back, Ben. Hold on. Lost. Continue on. <laughs> Pull out the calculator. <laughs> Just keep on going. Like I would put it, I would put it at least at a nine for me. Um, and I think that again, I think for me, reading a book is all about just like being entertained. And I was very entertained in this book. I think like I I read before bed sometimes to help me fall asleep. And this wasn't a book like it Yeah, that's a mistake. Until, like, yeah, for this book. <laughs> Cause it yeah. was just like, I couldn't put it down and I, I never got to a point where, like my heart is racing at points. So I thought it was super entertaining. The thing, one of my favorite things about the book is it's world building in the sense that you don't have to go through like four chapters of just like long exposition, but instead during like a scene where things are super intense and you're super intrigued in what's going on, the main character Violet starts like reciting history about the area so that so, you don't so have exactly to, the opposite so, of Ben's opinion. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. that that keeps me intrigued instead of having to like wait just but get through the beginning of a book to like get to the exciting stuff. Does so. doesn't that like totally destroy like the the like intensity of that scene though? Because for me it did. I'm not saying you're wrong. Like you're yeah, wrong. I think but it for can me, work like, for different people. I mean it, yeah. it's, no, I, it's yeah. a character trait of hers that she uses to calm herself down, right? But to like get who does it. that? Who it, it felt forced to me. You know, it's like no nobody will just do that. I don't know. Maybe maybe some people will. I don't know. I know like a common a common thing with anxiety is the whole like five things you I, I'm always bad at remembering what it is, but like you know, you recite like the five things you can hear, the four things you can see, like stuff like that, three things you can feel. Yeah. And so like doing something with your brain in order to calm it down to be able to like recognize what's going on around you is something that people do. Now is it frequently like reciting the history of America? No. So that is like unique, but I just think that for someone who like doesn't always love how long it takes to like build up a world and 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 understand what's going on i appreciated it that it was like kind of throughout the book and in these moments that i was like okay like my heart is racing like i can't wait to get to the next page and so like you like i guess it does slow you down as a reader to have to like read through the history i do agree with that but i appreciated what it did for like the the like i appreciated kind of having a lack of exposition honestly so it's that's kind of like a creative point, yeah. way to info dump, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So, and it's just, maybe it's just something that I haven't been exposed to ever. Like yeah. I, I am used to just like the whole, like, okay, like they're going to yeah. walk along a road and just tell you about the world instead mm-hmm. of like, you know, fly on a dragon and tell you about the world or whatever. Like, yeah. yeah. So. I also think this, this, this book is not like, like Josh was saying, it's written by a woman about a woman for women and so it is definitely a female-centered book and I think it's also a really good intro book for women into fantasy because I've talked to my friend who's read this book and she's sort of like new into the whole romanticy thing too and I think that she was like I can't go back to reading just regular romance books because there's a certain level of adrenaline that comes with and like just yeah just adrenaline that comes with reading fantasy that without it a book is like suddenly lacking so I think it's a really good like intro book mm. that has both aspects, like a, a good love story and like a decent fantasy that can sort of pivot women into this 
into like fantasy. That's really cool. I I really appreciate that. Like if nothing else, that this book is expanding what fantasy can be because Mm -hmm. I feel like that's really necessary. I feel like for a long time throughout the early like 2000s and into the 2010s, it was like subsumed by Game of Thrones, right? Like everybody was trying to write like Game of Thrones and that made for like a lot of grimdark, a lot of um, like a lot of pretty similar stories. And I feel like that um, prevented a lot of people from enjoying fantasy like they should be able to. And um, and so I feel like one thing that Sanderson always talks about is that like fantasy is probably is like so cool because it's just like a blank canvas. You're not like limited by anything like, right. Like if you're trying to write a book that's centered in the world, you're limited by physics and you're limited by, you know, like expectations that people have versus like, if you come into this new fantasy book, well, suddenly you can have like a lot more people dying, right. Because there's no societal expectations or you can have um, people communicate telepathically with each other. Right. So um, I'm glad that this is expanding what fantasy can be. Um, so that's like, I think a net positive that I don't think anybody can argue with. Yeah. I think what it also offers for, as far as like female readers go is it's, it's about a main, like it's a, it's a classic narrative, right? The underdog heroine. But I think what's, what's fun about reading this book as a woman is that there's this girl who's physically very weak, has like a chronic illness or a chronic disease of just like having malformed joints so she she just is like struggling physically right and so a lot of people like are quick to pick her out as a target um there's like people in the book who are just trying to protect her and like try and keep her alive and then there's people in the book who recognize her worth as someone who's maybe not like super physically strong but they see that she has potential in that but she's also strong in other ways and so like we can get further into this like later into the spoiler section but there's just there's there's experiences that she has where it's cool to see someone who is like physically sort of seen as like an underdog and weak have potential in ways that isn't just like oh she gets stronger in the book even though that does happen yeah. like there are other things that people see as like potential in her where other people don't so it's like it's an empowering read for women too i think good point um i will uh just round up my quick uh spoiler free thoughts and then we can dive in I think I would probably give this book a six out of 10. It's one, like I said, I really wanted to love because of the aspects. I loved Aragon growing up. Um, You know, I love dragons and the aspects of like bonded riders. And so I think there were some uh, unique and cool takes on that in this book that I really enjoyed. Um, the the parts where it kind of fell short for me were I think the characters and like you said Riley this is a book written by a female author um with a female protagonist um I mean and women are probably the target audience and I think that's that's totally fine I, I I'm sure I read lots of books that are the complete opposite, you know, with male author, male protagonist geared towards male audiences. And to me, it, this book kind of helped me understand where, um, you know, a lot of like male authors get crap because they can't write female characters. And so I felt like I kind of saw the flip side on this (laughs) where I was like, I feel like she can't write male characters super well. Um, writing them for the female gaze yeah Yeah. for the female gaze the only emotion that males had in this was horniness that was it (laughs) Um, no no protectiveness too you can't you (laughs) can't couch in even even Jack who just wanted to kill her the whole time you just got okay okay sorry again chapter one chapter one guys it's it's not a big spoil all right let's let's save it and and so um I think that there's potential as it continues to go on and the story develops um, in later books. I will say that if I hadn't finished, if I had rated it after maybe like 70 to 80% of the book, I probably would have given it like, I don't know, a four (laughs) out of 10. But the last part of the book was very exciting for me and it um, really improved the story and went in directions I didn't see. And it made me 
want to read the next book when it comes out. So nice. that that's my spoiler free review. Now let's like jump into spoilers. Um, we can, you know, dive into the nitty gritty details of everything um, as it happened um, or, or, or different parts of the books that we loved or hated. Um, for me, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in just by saying uh, I thought this was going to be your typical love triangle with Dane and Zayden. It, it was not surprising at all that Zayden ended up being like her love, the love of her life or whatever. Um, it was a little surprising that she didn't like Dane at all. You know, I thought this was like Twilight with where Edward was basically Zayden, you know, this brooding guy who's like i'm just gonna hurt you if you get close to me and then dane is like you need to stay away from that guy you know he's jacob i, I was like this is exactly twilight and and it, it did it did change uh for the better although i, I mean I, dane I, is basically camlin if you've read quarter Thorn and roses or Cam, whatever yeah, his name Camlin. Is. Tamlin. Yeah, Tamlin. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so that is, oh, okay. that is very similar i definitely i felt yeah. like a quarter thorns and roses like the, the whole series was like i think that she drew on some of some aspects of that for yeah. this. I, drew on is a is a nice way of putting it. <laughs> Which to I think that that's why I stopped reading A Court of Thrones. Well, I think I got like through book two, but and mild spoilers for A Court of Thrones and Roses for those of you that have read Fourth Wing without Court of Thrones and Roses. But the like the character assassination of Tam- Tamlin Tamlin in book two was just like so extreme, you know. So at least she didn't start Dane off as being like. You let's, know, let's, a, a good guy. So anyway, I I won't go too far into that story. Yeah, now, but like, yeah. 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 <clears throat> um, okay. So uh, real fast, because I wanted to bring this up. Um, I think it was Josh that told me originally that Rebecca Yaros, the author, I think I'm saying her name right, actually has this uh, like disability that oh. Violet. Yeah. What is, is, it, like, is it Marfan or Ehlers-Donlos? Yeah, those those are both kind of like joint issues in which like you can have hypermobility and like connective tissue disorders. Um, yeah, and and I think four of her six children have it too. Wow. Yeah, and so I think that that's probably why like um, I think Riley, when you're talking about like how that was like a great aspect of the book for you, I think that that's probably why is that it's something that she can write with with like a yeah. lot of authenticity and like she's probably had to prove her her own worth like throughout her yeah. life um in various ways because of this so I, I i do agree with you on that that like that was a highlight through the book and it was cool to see her get stronger and like more capable f- a fighter but also like at the same time figure out how to use her knowledge of like poisons and stuff to like defeat her opponents and figure out like um you know how to uh like conquer the obstacle course using the ropes and the daggers and stuff like there's there's just like a lot of cool parts to it that um, uh, like because she had that built in weakness that it provided her with a lot of problem solving opportunities throughout the book. And I think yeah. that she did really good at capitalizing on those. Yeah. Yeah. I looked okay. it up at Ellers Donlow syndrome and it's, I didn't realize that her like graying hair was part of that too. Cause it mentions oh, a couple yeah. times. Yeah. That she has like the silver hair at the end or something. And I had no idea. I like thought that that was going to be explained later in the book or something uh and it never was so that makes sense that it's part of that condition that she has yeah so i agree with you i think that that's uh a really like a highlight of the book for me um so sorry go ahead man go, yeah, no go for it josh so i think my biggest complaint about the book which i'm i'm willing to change my mind on but i don't she never she she did have a lot to overcome, but I don't think she like failed once during the entire book. And I think that like when I got halfway through the book or so, and she like never she like had to do th- she had to overcome things, but she never failed in overcoming them. And so when I got about halfway through, like and just realized that this person was never gonna fail, it took away a lot of the stakes for me. And again, like that's not a bad thing. Like I know. You know, it's like you don't necessarily not everybody wants to go read a book where like the protagonist gets like fails during it. But like to me, that's what I I really like seeing that in literature, you know, because I fail at things. And and so seeing people fail and then overcome and grow from that failure, like is something that I appreciate. And she did have to be rescued a few times. 
So I might push back on that a little bit. She was, I mean, she had to be rescued by um, the dragons when Jack was chasing her during the, what, she, what you know. She, she did have to be rescued a few times, but um, again, that was more like she got rescued because she was so awesome, right? Like she bonded the two dragons. And so like, it, it wasn't really her. And again, it, even that wasn't really like something that she was trying to overcome. It, it just like kind of suddenly happened. And then she like got rescued from it, you know? So it wasn't even really a failure on her part. It was just a, you know, a I situation guess, yeah, that yeah, she, she didn't like bring upon that, like, a, like, uh, you know, bring upon that situation based on like some hubris that she had or something. Yeah. Would you consider the obstacle course like something that she kind of failed and then no, because she used her, her she used her yeah. deep seated knowledge of paragraph or she used her practice chapter three, time well. paragraph two of the of the thing that <laughs> whatever you know that <laughs> she was able to use the knife like because I feel yeah. like that, that didn't like she didn't do that until she was actually competing right and so I but, went into that like not I, knowing how she was going to overcome it. But I think that's but what you're you saying she, is that did you ever doubt she was going to overcome it though? Right. I don't. I guess not. No. I, well, I mean, which again, this, this isn't a bad thing. This is just yeah. like a personal taste thing. Yeah. Like for for me, I, I'm not like saying that this is like a definitively bad thing about the book. It's just like for me when I'm reading it, like I'm like oh, like you know, she's she's just going to be able to do everything she needs to do, which mm-hmm. again is like fine, but. It's and not, I also, do, do you feel like that's a common thing in a lot of books? Like, do because I can't, I'm trying to think of other books where I read about them, like fail. I feel like in books, even in like any, in any sort of media, you sort of always know, like things are going to end up all right on the other side. Cause it's fiction. Yeah. Right? But most of the time that, that has like the character failing in some ways, like in some, in some uh, not in I'll, Grimdark, I'll and... Briley, not in Grimdark. You got to read <laughs> yeah, more of that. <laughs> not even not even in grimdark but like um i don't know like i'm just trying to think of like common examples like in harry potter and stuff that like yeah. everybody that i don't feel like i'm spoiling a series for but like you know harry do, like he ties with cedric and winning the tri tri wizard tournament dies. or like he'll serious die or he they'll like lose quidditch games sometimes or you know like things don't yeah. always you know harry doesn't always succeed in everything you know yeah I, I think i think it's you know like versus and one, they like reach, they triumph in an unexpected way, like through like setbacks versus one, it's kind of like, you know, a straight path to victory. And there's not too many, like too many different things. Like, I I mean, the fact that like Vi kept winning over and over, like on the, the mat, you know, like the wrestling, like grappling competition where like she just kept poisoning people and people are like, this is suspicious. Like, yeah this no lady's in front of me in the cafeteria line and close to my food i don't know um no she 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 positioned herself in the as the server and they're yeah. able to yeah, yeah. And oh, okay e- well and even when she would get pinned it it always like was you know turned into like some super sexual situation you know well that <laughs> like, was only with zayden she fought liam once didn't she and like was in the hospital because of it am i remembering yeah that right? Yeah. Oh, was she, that Liam that broke her arm at the beginning? I didn't I didn't catch that. I thought there was a point like after she had kind of gone through all of her poisonings that she poisoned someone too soon and so it somebody got, else stepped it, in. Yeah. yeah you're right. She yeah. had to end up fighting Liam, who was the the guy who wanted to kill her like all along. But no, but wait, was that, that really a failure or was that wait, just wait, wait, hold on, hold on. That Liam, was I did, that's not Liam. That was Oh uh, Liam's yeah. the good guy. Sorry, we like yeah, Liam's the good it, guy. It's been a minute, sorry. Yeah, who's the guy Jack. that wanted her dead like from Jack from the beginning? Yeah. She had but, a fight back at this point. Yeah, yeah, but um, she also had her arm broken at the beginning. Josh, let's let's be. Yeah, but again, was the arm breaking thing that was like her being strong enough that she wasn't going to tap out? She would rather have her arm broken than like tapping out. You know. All right. I Even think, when I she think loses, we've... she wins. All right. No, I'm just, I'm just saying it was it was framed her enough. Arm. I, okay, I, I think sorry. we've talked about it enough. No, okay. we, I think that is that is a valid complaint, Josh. Is yeah. that if you're reading a book and you suddenly realize that this character is like a Mary Sue and yeah. they're never gonna like they have all sorts of plot armor, they're never gonna fail. Like that does that would take away from the reading experience. Mm-hmm. Just knowing I mean, it's always gonna be positive. Yeah. Um one one thing that I wanted to talk about was I feel like a lot of these characters were very like one-dimensional. 
Um, and the one that bothered me the most was like the main antagonist for most of the book, which was Jack. And yeah. he was just kind of like this bloodthirsty guy who like wanted to kill her for no reason. He had like, you don't get like any background on him. He's just like, I'm going to kill you. Like, you know what? I'm Not only do her to too, you. it's just everybody. He's just a yeah. like, like he like turns around and shoves the like other person off the parapet before like coming after yeah. her. Like he just, he breaks it, somebody's it, neck in practice. Like. He's, it's like yeah, he's just bloodthirsty. I get you want like the strong people to survive to become dragon riders, but you don't want psychopaths. Like, yeah. I mean, you like lose half of your army because someone's so crazy. Well, yeah. that's that's the other thing. I feel like this is not my original thought. I I've listened to a few uh, booktuber reviews, and a lot of people point out the like massive plot hole of like the fact that they're conscripting like massive swaths of the population. And then just killing them in ridiculously stupid ways. <laughs> like you can just like have people drop out of the college instead of having to kill them. Like put a net at the bottom of the parapet, yeah. you know, and if they fall off, then like put them in the like, in, like find a different role for them. You know what I mean? But if you're like conscripting people for your army, then you don't, you don't want to be killing them for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, part of part of that is like part of, I, and I also think that's a bit bizarre that they're like, okay with killing off people who could potentially protect them in the future but the whole reason that they ended up enlisting all of the like rebel the like rebel the kids, children of the rebels yeah, yeah. so like they'd eventually die anyways but now they could also just die in war it didn't need to be like you know on the parapet but well then you're freaking giving them like insider information to your most valuable like wartime secrets that's not super smart either like yeah. eh, to, to be fair america did that with the nazis after the war we well, okay I, i'm just saying like there's it's 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 definitely interesting decisions being made by leadership in this book yeah <laughs> yeah i i and maybe I you know well, maybe... we already know they're kind of selfish right they they're clearly like putting them like whatever if the rebels are right you know with the the griffin or the wyverns are back i mean we know the wyverns are back but like they're just kind of like throwing the griffin riders like not helping them at all because they're like we're just going to protect ourselves, you know rather than like let's work with our allies versus a common enemy so it seems like the leadership is already inept yeah we're not expecting them to make these amazing decisions it, 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 it's, we're not sure why like violet's mom and but there, there's a difference between competent. being poor strategist and just like intentionally killing your you know having like, artificial stakes I mean, so, talk to all the dictators of history, right? So, okay, here, here's here's another uh, thing that kind of annoyed me. And sorry to keep you know <laughs> rambling this off, um, but I, I think I think we might have some agreement on this one. Is how it was so ridiculous, like on how she continued just to think that like Zayden wanted to kill her. Like obviously, <laughs> he wasn't going to kill her. <laughs> it's like to get like I felt like it was over the halfway mark mark where she was like, if you're gonna kill me, just kill me now. And he was like, So I can plan out I, the rest I of my week. I don't want to kill you. Like, yeah, yeah. So I can yeah, so I can plan the rest of my week. Right. It's like I don't want to kill you. I've told you I don't want to kill. I could have killed you before, but I, I didn't. And you're like, I don't want to kill you. And it was just like I don't know if we like as readers were supposed to think that he actually wanted to kill her. Like you <laughs> obviously I don't know. Anyway, there, there you go. I, did I don't you guys want to keep rambling? Did it. any of you guys doubt when you first met Zayden that they were going to fall in love? I was hoping it would be like a book two thing. Like I was hoping. Ryan, listen. As soon as I heard that their gazes collided, that was <laughs> that was it. And the description of how beautiful he is. <laughs> yeah, I looked over and saw the most yeah. beautiful man I've ever seen. Yeah. Our gazes collided. I knew, but, but my sister. I, told me to stay away from him don't <laughs> don't go near that guy because that always works well right yeah i love their intro lines like hi i'm zayden you killed my brother hi i'm violet my i killed your father like as as if they don't already know these facts about each other yeah it, it's kind of like things that are like cringy but like how many books do we read that like you could make lines they say cringy right like I don't know. You just yeah. This one out. you don't have to stretch very. Yeah, far. I mean Ugh. it could be because it's slightly YA or new adult or some or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It, I would agree that. And I think I think 
I could be wrong about this, but I think this is Rebecca Yaros's first fantasy novel. I think she's typically, because after yeah. I finished it, I went back to see if she had any other books that were like it. And I think she only has written romance before this. So I think this is her like first attempt at something like this. And so I think she's used to writing these super just like female gaze men, yeah. cheese lines between the two. And and to that point, I, I think she did like a decent job if you're like trying to transition over from just romance where you like know that if you turn to two thirds of the way through the book, you're going to, you know, I mean, like find these two characters getting together. Like, I think that she did a good job of um, of keeping that same because part of why people love reading fantasy is they know what they're going to get. Right. And so I feel like that's part of the allure of this, Ryan, when you're meeting Zayden for the first time yeah obviously you know that they're gonna fall off but that's why people like fantasy you know what I mean like it's like the comfort food of books right like that's so I don't know if that's a bad thing well I think that this book isn't like fantasy is like a subplot you know most of the books we read romance is a subplot to like right. anything going on in fantasy and this is the opposite fantasy is a subplot to any romance and that's that's what the readers tip that's what most of the readers want and you can see that and how well reviewed it is and how people are just raving about it because like that's what rebecca yaros was supposed to write for this book and according to the vast majority of people she's done an amazing job it's it's like you don't want to take sanderson world building and stick it in this because it's just going to get in the way of this the, like you know the love story between Vi and Zayden. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with that. But again, I think that there are some things that felt just artificial about it. Like again, she no nobody would think that he was out there to kill her. You know, after he had every chance, or at least give her a reason, give her an actual reason to think that. You know, um, I mean, he says with the people he's gonna handle her. Like as readers, it's not believable. You're like, you don't think he's gonna kill her at that point, but like. But like so much of it felt like you were supposed to be experiencing this tension of like, oh no, I'm like, I'm alone with him. He could kill me now. But it's like, no, like nobody, I just didn't feel that tension. You know, if she was alone in the hallway or like when she was you in the room, and she got, the oh, I felt tension. some tension, <laughs> but, but not the, not the violence tension. Anyway, it's, we, we can, we can move on. It's, it's well, just, I think she, she offers a sort of explanation at some point when he, like when she, she sees all the rebels gathered together when she's up in the tree. And so mm -hmm. that sort of becomes like a, okay, like you, you've kept this secret for me, which is like huge for me and my, like my rebel brethren and stuff. So I really appreciate that. And for that, and like only for that, will I like not kill you when I get a chance? Cause I like appreciate what you've done sort of just giving like instead of just having the brute violence that jack has it's it's giving her the benefit of the doubt of like maybe you're not as bad of a person as i thought you were but i i do agree that for whatever reason she continues to think that she's gonna die by his hand um so here's here's a um a theory i've heard um i did not come up with this but there's a line where he says that he's loved her for longer than she knows and so a lot of people well this person that I was listening to thought that that could be because he was um, like her brother, like, cause we know that him and her brother are friends. And so her brother was like telling him about her and she, he was like starting to fall in love with her like before he even met her. Yeah. Um, and so I think that maybe like he never intended to kill her, but maybe he wanted to like build some type of walls between them because he didn't like, he was he already had feelings for her and he didn't want those to like appear because he didn't want to risk people finding out or whatever yeah. so i don't know maybe there's a reason that he wanted her to think that wouldn't um, he have told her that i mean when when he was like i'm not gonna keep anything else from you well we know he was keeping things from her until like the very last scene of the book right okay i i, I forget if they had any like moment to resolve that. wasn't like seeing her brother like the last scene of the book yeah mm -hmm. i think yeah. yeah so i don't know i feel like um yeah i feel like he was keeping that from her at least and right to, i'm also gonna be annoyed if she's not pissed off at her brother because she got mad at zayden for the stupidest thing of like not wanting to tell her the whole story yeah okay well i mean clearly everybody thinks he's dead for a reason maybe because 
Like, I, I, I don't know. Here's, here's just me theory crafting. Maybe her dad and her brother, because her dad knew something was going on and was leaving hints for her and her brother. So maybe her dad and brother faked his death or Ooh, and her brother can um, heal so maybe maybe his dad like um i don't think her dad is still alive I... wait so what was that? that how did her dad die i don't remember like a heart attack oh okay. yeah, yeah he, he's just kind of like yeah heart just attack. but maybe yeah. maybe he poisoned himself and faked his own death and then was it is it brendan or her, her brother's name brendan? healed him yeah maybe but why wouldn't he be there with I don't know, Ryan. We're I, I just... think I think the dad. I think it would be too much if both of them are still alive. Yeah, that's the whole point of this book, Ryan. Is to be too much. You, yes. you, it's that's the whole point. You can be too much and have it still be okay. Okay. <laughs> it would right. be crazy if her dad. I thought, like, I thought the book. I think the plot line was super predictable, right? Like the second you see Zayden, you know they're gonna fall in love. You realize that, like this is a war like you know she's an she's an underdog heroine who's like eventually going to get stronger and like she's going to be fine and she's going to stick around like that you you see all of that coming but i think that there are a lot of little twists throughout the story that i i personally didn't see coming and kept it like interesting for me even though i knew like kind of how things were going to go well that's why yeah i think that's why we all love the ending so much is cuz it was so predictable until it wasn't right until you're like oh gosh like everything is turned on its head now yeah yeah Liam dying was devastating. I thought that was it. Liam, I, was I thought it? Liam and Zayden were gonna have like a love triangle with her at at some point. I mean, I know, like, uh, dude, with see, these then books, we could have actually had love we could have had an actual love triangle with like uh, Liam uh, and Zayden uh, having a thing, and then like yeah, the the we could have had a full on triangle there. Yeah. But no, yeah. I um, I really didn't even see that coming because I know that there's that line in there that's like a dragon or a. A dragon without its rider is like sad, but a rider without its dragon is dead. Yeah. Yeah. And that's I, like the beginning. Yeah. It's like the very yeah. beginning. And I read that and I was like, oh, that's like probably like symbolic in the sense of like if a if a rider doesn't have their dragon, like they don't have the protection. So they'll like probably die, like be an easy target. So yeah. when he when um Liam's dragon died and all this stuff started happening, I was like, <sighs> <laughs> yeah You're well it's tough because you didn't get an example of that happening until yeah. it happened you get that one line and i think it i think it may be repeated a couple times so it, it, yeah it's a catchphrase thing for them but i really just didn't think that it was like a literal thing well okay so i'm gonna kind of branch off and this is related to that because i agree with that i wish that we would have seen like another writer die before it was like our favorite like secondary character dying i don't know i, like I do not know I do not know how a society that is so reliant and knows everything about dragons cannot freaking recognize a baby dragon. <laughs> like the what kind they, of a plot hole is that? that? What are you talking about? They don't know everything about dragons. There's She's keeping of, they, they live the around secret. dragons. What? How can but, they have survived hundreds of years riding dragons and not know what a baby dragon looks like? Because dragons keep things from them because there's like that secret, like the veil that the drag, the baby dragons come from. I'm sorry, or, there can be a veil, but somebody would have been able to look at that dragon and be like, yep, it's baby. Well, <laughs> like, the thing, we've, they knew about them. They knew about the golden tails or whatever they were called, but they just feather don't. Tails. Know, yeah, feather tails, but they don't know like what they are. So they've seen them before. But they just don't know that they eventually. No, no. But yeah, you have like these writers and dragons that have like dragons. this close relationship, and they're not going to like communicate a little bit. Like, like you have hundreds of writers out there. They they're protect them. Crazy. Yeah, I feel like there's a lot that we actually don't know about dragons. There's the whole like I think the whole the whole scene where they like go off and they're trying to decide if she can have the two dragons. Um, it sort of like says that that there's there's a lot of things we don't know about how dragons like operate their politics anything like that and so i don't think it's i don't think it's unbelievable that no one knows that it's a baby i i understand like i i can understand dragons being able to keep like politics a secret but like this is like imagine humans trying to keep babies a secret like you're not gonna be able to do it you know it's true I don't know. I, think, I just I I, throughout I hundreds of years of hundreds of riders being bonded to dragons. I feel like you're gonna know what a baby dragon looks like. You've never met maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong, but that was <laughs> I, that was I, I think to me. I think it's a little nitpicky. It, it seems like a best of the worst then, or worst of the best. I mean, okay, fair. Um, uh, Riley, I want to know as 
as um, you love this book, and I think you're kind of in the typical audience who would love this book, was this romance like top notch for you? Um. Okay. I I felt like it was super slow burn as far as romance goes. Um, oh, you thought this was slow burn? I just I thought like <laughs> I, I'm used. To, okay, you read a Court of Thorns and Roses, and I don't think that one's slow burn. Like I think that you're sort of like there's a little bit of an enemies to lovers thing, and then by like chapter 10 they're like no longer enemies this one i think that drags on a lot more a lot longer i mean you got to get to at least chapter 30 um (laughs) i think i didn't read this book knowing that there was going to be like that it was going to be spicy that it was going to have smut in it and so i thought that this book had found like the perfect balance between like of smut that wasn't going to be like this super super graphic scenes but was going to have just sort of like a sexual tension that like kept a female reader, like interested in like rooting for something. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it. Um, okay. And then you get to chapter 30 and it sort of like. Blew yeah. Me. So we're, did that take away from, from it for you? Like, did you want that tension to like be there or was it like, I mean, oh, you, they're going you for it. Certain, yeah. You reach a certain point where you're sort of like, okay, like, yeah. like how long is this going to go on? Like, are we just going to wait till the next book for you guys to get together? Like, there's See, I probably would have preferred waiting. like a well not book. waiting but like you know like maybe like starting to confess their feelings in the mm-hmm. first Before, book. That's true, yeah. And, and then like, you know, like not necessarily acting on their feelings fully until maybe the next book because I think that so much of like the enjoyment of the romance is like the tension like that builds up to it and you know like the will they won't they I mean per- this is me personally and so I think that like once you like get them together yeah it relieves the tension and you know you're like finally happy to they're together but then it's then it usually comes to this like they're trying to like protect each other like no I don't want you to do this because I don't want you to get hurt and then like one of them does get hurt and they're heartbroken uh, and it's i don't know i, I generally yeah. like the before they get together more than the after they get together mm-hmm. i yeah. agree with you ryan because that whole pretty much every conflict in most books and especially in this book of after they get together is so contrived it's like oh we're not gonna be together because he says that he can't commit to me fully or we're not gonna be together because he lied for me in order to protect all of his like you know brothers and sisters or we're not going to be together because of x y and z and you're like come on like you guys are going to be together like let's not like play these yeah exactly and setting it up for that exactly contrived thing of like oh they're going to be broken up at the beginning of book two because he hid these things from her when like she was literally around somebody that could read her thoughts like for most of the book and so it just wasn't safe for him even if he wanted to tell her he really couldn't have and so, yeah, you're right. You just ran into these like, contrived. But but, but once reasons. again, I mean, we are all coming from like a totally different genre that we're used to, like interests that we're used to. So obviously this romance works like it, it's it's strange to me, but it, it's like <laughs> a proven formula, you know? Like, well, the thing is, the thing is, though, Ryan, it works for the first it works for a book. I don't know if it's been proven. Like, I guess a Kodar kind of has shown that it can work for a series, but I'm not sure. Like, I think I halfway through the third book in A Court of Thrones and Roses, and it's not so much about the romance anymore, right? So um we'll have to see if it can like if they can if they if she can capture the the reason why people love romance so much well, is because well, of that that tension and release and if that's already happened in the first book then where does she go from here well th- that's the thing that twilight did well though is like it had the first book of edward and then the second book was jacob and then the third book was her like choosing right? yeah but so, everybody hates the second book yeah okay well but like sitcoms do this all the time like with ross and rachel and i don't know i, but I edward, actually didn't... edward and bella don't actually like consummate their relationship until the final book yeah yeah so okay. you know like even if they're like kind of together it's like you don't like the ten- there's still ten there's still like sexual tension all the way until the end so um my favorite part of the book was the <laughs> the when... time <laughs> okay what, what, what was chapter 30 <laughs> chapter 30 <laughs> the, 
<laughs> but was the was the time actually that's going to be playing to my worst of the best but um was the time between when they kissed and chapter 30 um mm. i think that that was actually pretty compelling because i didn't know if they were going to get that release like i didn't know if they were going to hook up or if that's what that was going to be as far as it went like that was one thing where i was genuinely like oh dang are they going to stop it having that like one makeout session in this book and like you know is the plot can we actually... talk about how the the reason why they had that makeout session was because of like dragon sex that's There's a little a, weird a super weird aspect that she throws in there that is just really unnecessary <laughs> yeah okay. it's a little it's a little weird so okay well i'm gonna do my worst of the best right now. that was josh's best part <laughs> josh's. right there yeah no the the, <laughs> the 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 worst of the best is the missed opportunity of having people psychically connected and then not using that in like your smut scenes like <laughs> don't they kind of at the end no. don't they like say like they love each other i don't know yeah they say they love each other but like oh josh is like oh if only i'm just only. i'm just saying when when they when when they were like psychically connected started talking to each other psychically and like could kind of experience each other's emotions i was like oh well that's gonna make for some interesting uh scenes there <laughs> and then it wasn't used well there's there, maybe she's saving certain aspects for the next. <laughs> you know, books, you, you know? know what? Hopefully, others. I'm gonna be like miss opportunity, Rebecca Yaros. Like, I know, I'm not even the target audience for that, but like, just saying. I think the ladies would have loved it. Yeah, if you can like, Josh, if, like this if, is a hard magic system. <laughs> 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 okay, well, <laughs> that was a good one. There's my worst and the best. <laughs> that's fair. That's that's good. I did. I did actually enjoy the. Um, the, the telepathy aspect of it because it made them able to um it just like in like increase their relationship i did think it was weird that we had like a few months of them like being psychically connected and just like going back to normal where like there's just like this weird three month time period in the like late stage of the book where like seemingly nothing happened whereas like the first part of the book it seemed like every other day somebody was dying yeah. so that was a little strange to me but um I enjoyed the the telepathy aspect of it quite a bit. Well, I think it's and it's it's done in a court of thorns and roses too, but I think it's just yeah. it adds a very like it allows them to have these sort of, like these side conversations, which I think is something that we've accomplished today by like texting, right? Like you're in the same room, right. so you can, like have a side conversation with them without having to talk. And so it provides those kinds of like private conversations in public that like it just can't really what can't be done back then like when this is supposed to be set i think um, this yeah, is the I difference like between gen z and millennial here talking <laughs> I, I don't Texting think it's, is basically telepathy i don't think it's common i mean i've probably done in the past but it's pretty uncommon for me to like be in the same room with somebody texting them no you gotta like you because it's it's not just like hey like how are you it's like you talk about like something that's happening, right? And well, I, yeah, I know what Josh, you're saying. You've but... only flirted with like two girls in your entire life. She's not talking so, about. I don't know if you're the best person to. About, it's about flirting. It's about grief, like during. That's just that's just nice. Yeah. yeah. So I think it. I think it adds a super like fun aspect to be able to have these set conversations, and that they're able to like develop a relationship, even though they're not very frequently like one on one. Yeah. And they shouldn't be able to be either because they, you know, they're in this war school. So, yeah. but, well, and they're but like to be enemies. Couldn't you have had like a little bit like more, not not even like the romance romance, but like of them like just kind of like laying in bed, like talk, psychically talking to each other, you know, like kind of like what, like texting until you fall asleep type thing, you know, just like, I don't know. I feel like you could have made that a little bit cuter than just like. There are just some missed opportunities in the psychic connection romance department. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> all right, Josh. I, I did not expect that on my <laughs> fourth wing review is <laughs> psychic romance on Josh's missed opportunities. <laughs> all right, fair enough. I think that the ending of the book was satisfying and it paid off. I mean, we she's kind of hinted at like the wyverns and the venom being like the big bad and then we actually get to see them in in this book which i thought was i thought it was cool it was we get to see griffins and wyvern i mean i i would think that like if this is going to be a series of five books you would typically structure is this it with five like, books 
Yeah. Allegedly. Five or uh No, I think you're right. I think it's five. I think it's five. Dang. Um, okay. All right. I, I would think they would structure it with like the first book or two would kind of be conflicts with the wyvern, and then you like start seeing like pulling back the curtain and you see like this greater aspect. Um but I mean, I don't know. I thought it was I thought it was enjoyable. And you actually get to see the dragons in action. That's one thing that I that was kind of like frustrating about Aragon personally is like you have these very few dragon riders in the world. So there's not like very much combat between them. Whereas now you have like dragons flying around fighting. Um, I mean, wyverns are basically dragons, but only with two legs rather than the two arms. So I thought that was that was a cool way to see um combat I, I i like that a lot i don't know yeah. what'd you guys think about the end i like like i think yeah i think we've all already like i i really like the end um i don't know how realistic it would be for them to like again this kind of goes back to like the baby dragon complaint so maybe i'm just <laughs> okay. wrong but like but not not even the baby dragon but like keeping the fact that there's like this existential threat to the world that's like at their borders attacking border towns and like so, like somehow they're able to keep it from everybody um was it was it the wyvern attacking border towns i thought it was the griffins attacking border towns trying to get supplies for their war no i think the wyvern were i mean they were at the mages or whatever were at a town that was you know like not too far away from stuff right like that's what they're defending from the like mage people mm. Well, well, it was also that the things powering their wards were like the why it wasn't something to with like it was the weapons the that the wyverns used to kill them. Yeah, the weapons the, it was the weapon the Griffin Riders used. Yeah, so I think that they were like harvesting the weapons from the wyverns and the griffins fighting to power their wards. So I think that they're kind of like uh, trying to spur on the conflict between the griffins and the wyverns in order to like keep their wards up. Mm. Yeah. That was my impression at the end. That's interesting. Yeah, there's, there's, I'm not sure. I, I think I listened to it too quickly to really ke- like catch the nuances there. Um, what one of, I, I think for my worst of the best, I freaking love the scene where she stole the map from her mom's office. Mm-hmm. That was freaking great. I wish that she would have also stolen something that gave a clue to the ending. Right, like it seems like such a missed opportunity to me because they're in the office, they're like poking around things that they know they shouldn't. Like they, she saw the dagger there or whatever. Like give us some foreshadowing because the ending was so great. And I think the only thing that could have made it better is if there was, and maybe there were clues that I just didn't miss, but or that I just missed, but I haven't heard anybody talk about those clues in the few videos I watched. So I wish that there was some like foreshadowing. And I think that that could have been done really easily in that scene. Yeah. Yeah, I I liked the ending a lot. I feel like there was cuz like I feel like it was the slow burn romance that kind of kept me like intrigued and and reading more about the dragons and and the writers and all that stuff and how the war camp works. And then it like 80% in the book, chapter 30 hits and so like it's that like, is, what do is, I even live for? Yeah. Now? <laughs> so that's resolved, but then like immediately they're thrown into this like huge conflict and it's just like one thing after another is unearthed that you're just not expecting. Um, mm-hmm. Like when they, like the fact that they're like post is like a sham and they were sent there to die and that like Dane. Yeah, that's crazy. And this whole time. And um, I think there's, there's your, I think you're right, Ben. There's not a lot of hints about the, the wyvern and the venom. I think that I like that that's sort of a twist that they've talked about. And it's sort of like, you know, she, she learned about them as a kid from her dad and she goes and tries to get another copy of the book right in the library. And it's like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Why wouldn't that exist? So, it's only. only yeah. Book. So there's some hints. Yeah. There's like, there's some hints, but you only can catch it once you finish the book. I think, I don't think I like, I didn't see it coming that they were actually going to be real. Um. So, and then like her brother being alive too, like there's just all these twists at the end that just, they do come out of nowhere, but it is just like, it's a really exhilarating last like 20% of the book. Yeah. Um, I want to know, Riley, what was, what's your opinion on like, what, 
I think it was one of the most unrealistic things was how mad she was at Zayden for something that clearly he had no control over. Yeah. Right. He didn't, he wasn't the one hiding things from her. Right. That was her mom or and the people uh, like that cho- choose to keep things things secret. Like he couldn't tell her. Cause like what Josh said, like he's got her like childhood boyfriend. That's like capable of reading her mind. So like, why is she mad? You know what I mean? I, I, when I got to that point in the book, I texted my friend who had already read it. And I was like, she's being ridiculous, right? Like, okay, okay. No reason to be upset right now. She, I thought I thought it was super childish that it was just sort of like a, like he didn't tell me kind of thing. But it's like, if you use, and I hope she gets to that point. Like, I hope the conflict isn't isn't carried on yeah. into the next book. I hope she gets there pretty quickly and realizes that like, there's, he's not the problem. He was literally just trying to protect people like his friends and and you know doing the, sort of the same thing that like killed his whole entire family but like trusting the cause so much that he continued so i hope that she like realizes that he was very like, rationalized and keeping it a secret from her um also like you know she doesn't he doesn't know for a fact that he can even trust her because she is the daughter of the war general well, and plus he never said that he was telling her everything yeah. like he always says like I'm sorry, I have to like keep things from you. You know what I mean? It's not like I don't well, know. She just thought it was his body and his <laughs> his, his hotness. That he needed to. Keep. Um, one of my favorite. I like highlighted this part in the book. One of my favorite parts that, like, I think this book. I there's parts in it where like my like when I'm trying to fall asleep, like my heart is racing because like something like the conflict is happening or she's like keeps like there's just exciting things that happen throughout the books. So, like it it literally like makes my heart race and there's other parts that give me goosebumps and one of the parts that gave me goosebumps is right after she finds out that they're like that the wyvern are real and they're like trying to fight for the people outside the wards and she's talking about how like he didn't he's not like really attempting to convince her and she says a a line i think it's super it's just like the truth rarely yeah the truth rarely needs effort is what she's Mm. she like that it says that and it's like, my dad used to always tell me that. And I think you read that. And there were a couple of things in the book where I just feel like they were really powerful and just very true that make you think. And I think that was one of the lines of just the truth rarely needs effort. You don't need like this, this thing, this horrible thing that's been on earth, like doesn't, she doesn't need to be convinced of it because she can just recognize that like everything that's been kind of confusing my life now makes sense. It yeah. Is, I really liked that part. It brings all the pieces together. Mm-hmm. I yeah. think similar to that line, it was like, there, it only takes like two generations, like one generation to rewrite the history and then teaching that to the next generation. Mm-hmm. Can I say one more thing? Sure. <laughs> okay, first of all, <laughs> let me say that I think I'm going to bump up my ratings to a five. Uh, oh, yeah. whoa, 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 Josh. Wait, don't get too carried away with your I, I, mediocre I think you guys reading. have brought up, mediocre. I think I've been reminded of enough things that I did like about this book that... I think I think five is a is a good rating. Um, nice. As long so, as it beats Court of Thorns and Roses. It, it it's better. Yeah, I I think it's much better than a court than a Court of Thorns and Roses. Um, okay. So again, let me and let me preface it again with saying that like I think that like uh, women can, don't need men to defend them, and like that they can be totally independent, and like I'm considering okay, myself. Gosh, okay. In enough. Some regards. Enough. Uh, yeah. Okay. So Signaling here. So. Virtue signaling out of the way. I do think that the beginning, like her getting so mad at Dane for like just doing what like any friend after would do, like really kind of rubbed me the wrong way, especially because she had such a good actual reason to hate Dane saved for later on in the book. I thought it would have been much more compelling if she like didn't just immediately start like not liking this guy who like clearly just wanted her best interests. I know that like she took it as him not thinking that she was capable and like not having faith in her. And like, I get all these reason reasons, but like, I think that if she had like a friend that was going to cross the parapet, she'd probably tell them not to and try and get them out. If you know what I mean? Like after having seen what she saw, she'd probably not want her friend to go through it too. So like, I think that Dane, like again, like there's those you know parallels to Tamlin, and but uh, but I think that Tamlin, I think that it worked for Tamlin in that book because there weren't any threats at the time. Whereas in this one, it, it really was like he was protecting 
there were like there's real active threats. threats against her. Yeah, there were active threats, and she had like a strong probability of dying. So I think any friend that that saw a way out for their friend would like act in that way. Like it was a perfectly reasonable way for him to act, and not just she. He thought that she was weak and couldn't handle herself, and you know what I mean. I I, I think I agree with you up to a point. There's like once she's like halfway through the year and already like bonded to the dragon, he probably should have like let yeah up. let up. Yeah, but for I, sure, I, yeah. I I would agree. I think that it was again. I'm not like a connoisseur of, of romance here. But I wish that there was a little bit more of like uh like love triangle thing going on with like she should have at least had like some feelings for him. I think it would have made the like romance plot a little bit more like, oh, who's she gonna choose or whatever. Like I, well, I wish I, that there I think was... if he was written a bit better, I think I wouldn't have liked it the way he was written. Yeah, that I mean that's my point though, is that like, you know, she he could have been written as like because talking about one dimensional characters, like that was his dimension, right? Like is like every interaction, all he's going to do is try and protect her. And it's just going to annoy her. Like that is the like yeah. extent of his character. And so throwing some line. Yeah. Throwing some lines of him being like really impressed by her and like amazed by, you know, what, everything she's overcome. I think, you I, can do get think there. I, I do think that, I mean, I, I feel like she's left some room maybe to add some extra dimension to him. Um, I mean, no, I still, once, once I he like him. betrayed her trust by reading her okay. mind and then sending them on a suicide mission. Okay. I feel I think, like that bridge is kind okay. of burnt. All right. Well, let me finish. I think that Dane is being misled by his father. And I think his father is like kind of a bit more, more nefarious than we expect because we know that the father goes everywhere with Violet's mom. I think that maybe he has some role in, um, I I I just think that like yeah. Violet's mom isn't like as bad as like she's just going along with everything. I think that right. Dane's father maybe is, uh, I don't know, somehow They're manipulating sure her yeah. and also misleading Dane. I I think that Dane, as much as he's cares for violet and tries to protect her he wouldn't just like betray her like that unless he knew that it was for like if he thought it was for the good of the kingdom but what yeah i mean so much sorry wouldn't it be so much more compelling to have dane go be a villain if she had actually like had real feelings for him him. and not just been annoyed by him the entire book yeah yeah that's what i'm saying i wish that there was some type of relationship there which which you bring up the the book doesn't have any great antagonist so Jack. far i mean we know <laughs> <laughs> yeah Jack. we we don't know or we, we know who like the big bad are we we don't have any like personification any character fr- from them whose motivations i don't like make sense to us like other than like i want to devour all the magic in the world like yeah i mean realistically it's the the protagonist or like the antagonist here is like her mom right like she's just like straight up evil um i I mean not not yeah maybe yeah yeah we just don't know we don't like i i agree with ryan there's there's not anyone that you can really point all the blame to yet um it seems like they're that dane's dad and violet's mom are maybe co-conspirators maybe one's manipulating one more than the other but all we really know is that like it's all a lie and there's like bad things happening i mean the other thing is i don't know if you can like yes it's horrible the fact that like these people that um violet's mom and dane's dad and the leaders of this area are like lying to the an entire people about what's going on but to a certain extent they are doing the same thing like they're just trying to protect their own which yeah is admirable in a sense like of course people outside of the wall are dying and that is bad but I think that that's going to be an interesting thing for Violet to have to talk to her mom about, because I'm sure that's going to happen at some point of the like moral obligation of protecting people who aren't your own and and going out of your way and, and helping people who can't help themselves. It's also interesting to see, like, why would the dragons be going along with this? Yeah. Like what do they have like some type of like obligation to this certain set of humans you know what i mean like i don't know guys i just had a big brain moment Uh oh 
Do you want my theory? Let, let's hear this and then let's let's wrap up. Yeah. Because... Sorry, we, we, this has been a long episode. Man, what a yeah. book, Josh. I feel like you got to give it a six just because of, man, I don't know if we've had maybe, that maybe five point five. discussion. Okay. Let, let's hear Josh's right. big brain moment right. and then big we'll wrap moment. up with worst of the best. Big brain moment that, um, that Dane and Violet are brother and sister. And that's why she didn't like feel anything <laughs> when he kissed her. And that, that Dane's dad you're and Violet's you're mom. And that Dane's dad and Violet's mom they're like that it's his her closest advisor and like most trust and confidant like totally could happen and then he like offed her dad poisoned her dad and and violet because violet's actually her her, her kid all, all right. right i mean that's a that's a big brain moment you heard it here you. first I, I i don't believe it but i i'm not I'm, I'm just saying like if you've had a crush on somebody your entire life and then they kiss you and like you're gonna feel something and, and not just be like, that you unless your genetics like project their genetics. Because exactly. Unless it's siblings. like, exactly, exactly. Or half siblings. This is my phantology guarantee. Oh, they're, they're siblings. All right. All right. Steven's you not heard. here to make it. I got to make it. Okay. Thank, thanks for that, Josh. Is there any other big brain moments that anybody wants to share? All right. I'm going to finish. I, I'm going to start I'm... writing some fanfic of them <laughs> using their... <laughs> Their metal powers. Your fanfic is that they're now incestuous. Incestuous. That's like even <laughs> bigger than the. You find out that's the... going on in the book. <laughs> okay. Well, they're step siblings. Okay. All right. That's what Josh's fan fiction. No, be. no, man. They're full, full, full. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. I, I was trying to. No, help but you they're out not having. Here, no, they're not having a relationship. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, Gosh, I'm gonna nice. I'm gonna do my worst of the best, and then if Riley has one, she's welcome to share it. My worst of the best is. Um, what I loved about this world building was the variety of dragons um, and and specifically how they differentiated like different colors with like the tails that like that's something I hadn't ever seen before. You know, you have like the dagger Dude, tails, Harry Potter man. tails. All right. Well, um, <laughs> I mean, I feel like Harry Potter isn't like quite as I, I know I was more joking. Yeah, that, that was like the... they don't have different tails in Harry Potter. They're like they have the hung- Hungarian horn tail. Yeah. Okay. All right. But that's that's like one. <laughs> I mean, I know. what you're, are you're the right. others? I don't know. Uh, anyways, I don't know. That's so right. I really like that about it. Um, what the worst part of it is that we didn't, and and maybe it'll come in future books. We don't know very much about griffins. I'd like to see a similar variety in griffins and lore behind that. I think I'd be disappointed if it's just like you have like ten different species of dragons and one type of griffin don't worry right in book two it's gonna be it's gonna be from zayden's perspective and he'll just be like doing some death defying thing and take a few minutes to talk about the differences behind the griffins all right thanks thanks ben (laughs) all right all right riley do you have any uh worst worst of the best for us you don't have to maybe the next book will just be specifically about griffins okay yeah it'll be it'll be griffin writers instead um i would probably say that i like I enjoyed um, Zayden and Violence, Violence relationship, um, but that that one part where she gets upset at him completely irrationally was just a huge like. It's just a point that it's conflict for no reason, and you don't want to read it. You just want like you know that there's an easy resolution if she would just think through it, and so that yeah. was hard for me to get through. Of just like she needs to kind of grow up and and realize what's actually going on here, and not just have her feelings hurt to have her feelings hurt. Especially because she's so smart. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she's so smart and capable that this it's feels like, barren like her. Sure. I mean, book smart is different from being, like, emotionally smart. Yeah. So but she's also emotionally smart throughout the book. She's, like, knows well enough to, like, kind of sort through why she's not feeling um, the way that she expected she would for um, for da- Damien. Mm-hmm. Um, that's his name, right? Dame? Dame. Dame. Yeah, she has Dane. like yeah, Dane. Sorry, she has a high emotional IQ, right? Um, and she knows well enough to like keep her bo- like her boundaries up, unless Zayden's gonna like fully commit uh, the same way she is. Like, so I don't know. I I agree yeah. with Riley that everything we know about her paints her as the type of person that would um not jump to any rash conclusions and kind of think through this in a rational way. Yeah. All right. Any, anybody have anything else to add that they want to get off their chest about this book? All right. All right. 5.5. You guys got me. You guys got me. Josh is up to a 5.5. Great. 
I'm so glad. I, I think this was a fun book. I'm glad that I'm really glad Riley joined us for this. I think she brought yeah. a great perspective to it. So thank you, Riley. If you guys enjoyed this review or if you want to yell at us, do it on YouTube. If you want to talk with us nicely, do it on Discord. Um <laughs> And yeah, we, we're on like pretty much all the socials, maybe not like super active on all of them. But... We're not on threads. Okay, not we're yet. not we're, we're not on threads yet. We're not, not quite. Not TikTok either, right? No. Oh, Ben's, we are on TikTok. Ben, yeah. Ben's our TikTok person. I don't know when the yeah. last time he posted was. But... No, not very long ago. But we've had some videos we, on there. We need to post gained... something from... We we need to post something from this podcast on TikTok. Pull out a, right. like a pull out we'll, a portion. We'll, we'll of try it. and capture. Although we might capture a lot more hate by broadcasting ourselves and yeah, our yeah. TikTok is a TikTok. it's a area of the internet that I do not tread in lightly. So, all right. Well, thanks, guys. Until next time, this is Phantology.